Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Manshed. Okay, before I uh, start on this review, uh, I don't know what order these videos that I'm recording uh, I'm going to be putting out on YouTube, so just in case you haven't seen me with this colour hair before, um, yet yeah, I've bleached it blonde as you can see, just for a laugh. Um, it's now, what, 27th of June, lockdown is easing or coming almost coming to an end thank god and uh, pubs are going to be opening 4th of july and stuff like that so as you may know i'm a regular quiz go I go to four pub quizzes a week and there's loads of regular teams haven't seen me since march so just as a laugh i thought why not i've lost a bit i've lost a couple of stone and i can't tell and i thought i'd dye my hair a, a wacky color as well so uh just as I'll have to go to give them a surprise when I go back, but it will be going back to normal colour, don't worry about that. Right, okay, enough of that. So what this review is about is this. I just want to show you the difference, the images that this creates compared with the older cams uh, I had fitted. It's a Hikvision or Hike, I think you pronounce it Hikvision, colour view uh, network CCTV camera. Now, I've had my CCTV system now for five years, and I've been using these. I'll just put my glasses on. I've been using these. Uh, they're a dome camera. Now, they're a great camera. They were, like I say, I've had five years, they're older design than that. The three megapixel. Good thing about dome is it's you know the vandal proofness but the bad thing about it is because the infrared emitter is within the dome you do get reflections back off the dome and it does affect the view of the thing in rain in heavy rain the view is unusable it's just loads of splodges all over the front now i did do another video last year on how to get over this problem and if you check the link up here you will uh, that will get you to that video you can get over that problem in the rain by fitting an external infrared light uh, turn this one off in the software and use an external light you then even in the rain you still then get a good image and that's shown in 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 that, that video that i gave a link to now like i said they were a good um, good camera apart from that the thing I liked about them was having an S as part of the suffix. These are a 2132, by the way, uh, series camera. Having a an S in the suff suffix means it had a connection here for a microphone. And I used, I just used a cheap little thing like that that I picked up from eBay. And I covered it in fur to act as a, a dead cat to eliminate the wind noise again i've done another video last year about setting up microphones and testing of different microphones powered and unpowered um, the unpowered ones are known as the uh, passive ones powered ones are active and i did a full test on them again another link up here i'll take you to that video that tests the sound of them now the good thing about these is the sound. The sound is better than the brand new colour view. Again, you will see that shortly. I've done a sound test on the two, but the sound quality from this and the sound volume that this picks up, it can pick up lower volume noises, people from further away than the colour view. It's not The colour view is not bad, but uh, this is better, which is a shame, really. So that was the original ones I put in. Then, a couple of years ago, I just replaced one of them with this. Now this is a turret camera, and they call it a pig nose as well, due to it looking like a, a pig nose. And as you can see, the infrared emitter on these is separate to the lens, and uh, that eliminates all internal reflections from the dome. So even in rain, when the rain is covering the lens and that, you don't get them annoying splodges. Um, 
this is five megapixels the previous one was uh, four megapixels but the new one i've got is this one now this is called a color view camera now there's no infrared emitter on this because believe it or not it's color even at night even in almost total darkness it only needs some um street lights or starlights moonlight any tiny bit of light around it amplifies and it's such so sensitive to low light it's unbelievable um, it's an f1 lens um, which lets in something like four times more light than an f1.8 or something i'm not sure of the figures but it's it's like having the aperture open really really wider than even an slr can go um we'll see shortly it isn't a false claim it does give a color image even at tested it last night i fitted one of them and fantastic um like i said as we'll shortly see but i'll go through just a tiny bit of the the differences in size and the fitting of them now the original one the 22 sorry 21 32 series that had a diameter across here of 11 centimeters and you can see the three mounting holes around the edge so when it's fitted under the soffits i just had to cut a chunk out of the back again i'll show you that shortly to clear that but it did fit under the front lip of the socket of the soffit so that's that one and then i mounted the, the mic next to it yeah it didn't look great i know with that fur on it and it didn't get too wet because it was tucked up behind the soffits and uh, it did eliminate wind noise really well if you check out in that other video i pointed out <clears throat> now the other one is slightly bigger and from the diameter from there to there on this one the 2355 is 12.7 centimeters now the way these mount is it's similar to the new one you twist that cover off it's just like a bayonet fitting you twist that off and th there's a little screw there and if you can see it you don't really need to see this but but you'll see that's a posi drive head on that and you loosen that screw and that enables you to move it around left and right and up and down it's in like a ball socket and you can take the whole thing off if you yeah if you back that screw off and twist the little tab around you can take the whole of that cover off and that then sits on like a rubber this rubber ball mount there and the three mounting holes for that are the same round the periphery here one two three so you put that up screw that up to the wall put the cables through push that down the cables can come out sideways um, if you're not going direct through the wall or the uh, the ceiling or whatever that you're fitting it to and um, then you clamp that back under there adjust it all and put it back the little hatch it's the same as the new ones this little hatch here it's for the sd card and the reset button is under there as well in the dome cameras the reset button is inside the dome um you can i'm going to put uh, i hadn't put sd cards in the old ones but i'm going to put them in the new ones uh, it's just a, a backup recording facility and putting two 64 gig sd cards in there so if ever the main nvr packs up or throws a wobbler at least you've got a backup recording to there so that's um, the second one of all now the new one slightly sort of different mounting 
it comes off the same bayonet fitting and that slides off but and again it it goes under two tabs there's two tabs on here and that lip goes under them two tabs locks in and then when you slid this little catch out of the way you can take the whole thing off it is a bit stiffer to come off this one it seems sorry i had to persevere with that but yeah you can get it off uh, it does at first i thought oh am i going to be able to get it off but it does the whole thing does does come off if you slide that the right way to clear it and then pull it forward and up so that's your mounting plate for this one and as well as one thing they have improved as well as the holes around the periphery you've also got these four mounting holes in the middle which is better because sometimes it can be a bit of a squeeze this can be right up against the brick wall and it's a bit of a squeeze getting your screwdriver in to uh, to do them so it's a lot easier if you're sealing mounting or want it going through these holes there so you would screw that to the the soffits but this slightly different than the other one this part here doesn't come off you can't get it off you'd have to take these three screws out but there's no need to get that off that keeps it permanently sort of clamped in there which is better it makes that not not loose and you've got the same hatch there for your uh, your sd card and your reset button is in there as you can see on this there's no infrared emitter you've just got your lens up here and these are a couple of led lights that give out a white light you can turn that on and off in the menus and you can have it various intensities you can set it to come on and off at certain times or you can have it on auto where the camera switches it on when it, it thinks it's too dark and it, it will bring that on what you can't do is link it to movement detection which is unfortunate um, they may come out with a, a firmware update or whatever for that i don't know but it'd be handy to have that light come on when it detects movement because otherwise it's on all the time and it could could annoy your neighbors because on full full brightness it is quite bright but i found last night testing the one i have fitted that i just didn't need it it was so bright and colorful with no lights whatsoever the one difference on this as well on the other one the uh, the five megapixel one that little tab that held this cover on was a posi drive screwdriver phillips screwdriver whereas this one it uses the tool that comes with all high vision cameras so uh yep yeah, that's that now like i said the difference in diameters between the two the the dome like i say was 11 centimeters the five megapixel was 12.7 centimeters and this new one is 13.8 centimeters now as you'll see shortly the first two did fit on my soffits and cleared the front little lip that you'll see this new one i had to cut an additional curve to clear clear that because they are long. i'll show you that shortly in the pictures so be aware that it is a diameter on the new one of 13.8 centimeters so it's a lot lot bigger if you're only trying to squeeze it in for small space so that's about it what you get in the box i've already unboxed it obviously is the camera itself you get a little packet of four screws and four roll plugs the nice stainless steel screws then as well so I suggest you, you keep them you've got your two little instruction books you've got a wall mounting template which is quite handy you can stick on and uh, all the info mark the holes the mounting holes get your little um miniature cd or cd dvd whatever 
uh, with all the PDF instructions. Doesn't make it's, they're a bit behind height vision in their uh, in the literature really. There's no specific mention of this camera. It's quite an old CD debunking. Um, a lot of it is generic info, but any any specific info for this camera isn't on there. I think it only goes up to like 2018 or something. And you get the this, which is a little thing to go around your network cable if you're not running it up and through and, and totally hidden. If you're having to run an external cable run, that can go over your, your network plug and make it totally waterproof. There's a, an O-ring seal in there and that, that'll you, you plug and socket where the where your network cable joins this. That can make it totally waterproof. And uh, of course you get your little tool, very, very handy. Um, square the splined driver on the end, you'll need that to adjust it. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, been through uh, everything, all the bits you get with it in the box, the different sizes and uh, showing you the cameras. Very shortly, I'm going to show you the mounting of it and the extra bit I had to cut out. Uh, and then I'll show you the difference between the cameras, sound and vision. Vision, it's fantastic. Sound, like I say, slightly under par compared to the old ones, but, but still okay. Now, the guys I got this from were CCTV Empire. The reason I got it from them was that I'd emailed them with a couple of questions um, about it. A uh, couple of other things I needed to know about the, the 4mm and the 2.8mm. And they were good enough to reply almost instantly to me emails. Uh, we had about three or four emails each way between us. And they sort of re replied like within an hour, which is great. And when a company or a shop does that, uh, I think they deserve me custom. I did find the camera 12 quid cheaper elsewhere. Um, I was, in fact, I was just about to buy it from them when I got one of the other one of the emails from the shop. I decided to go with these guys um, because they had been courteous enough to reply. And... Uh, that sort of indicates it's a pretty good customer service, so they deserve my custom. So I recommend them. They're not cheap, the cameras. It was £126. This is June 2020. Uh, still a lot cheaper than you get them on Amazon and eBay from third-party sellers. But you do have to register with them. Well worth uh, trying them out. Now, I did decide to go with the 4mm ones. 4mm is the field of view, so it's how much the camera sees. The ones I had in, the, the two that I've just shown you, were 2.8mm, uh, which is a much wider angle, but I've no need for that because on the front of my house, I've got one point in west and one point in east. And even the 4mm ones will give me a full view both ways down the street between the pair of them with a bit of overlap so i'm better off with four mil because it um it makes things in the distance look a bit nearer if you need a really wide angle for one camera to say um cover a whole yard or something out of the whole front of, of your house you'd be better off going with the 2.8 mil but like i said be aware that um somebody stood so many meters away from a 2.8 mil one will appear further away than the 4 mil. So if you need to zoom in on the face or zoom in on a, a number plate going down the street, you're better off with a, a 4 mil one. There's plenty of websites, plenty of um, videos on YouTube showing the difference be between the uh, the two in fields of view. And there's also a 6 mil one. So that's uh, that's about it. What comes in the box and the difference between the three different cameras and the mounting options. I will be showing you the results and what the picture and the sound comparisons are like. For now, let's just see a few pictures and a description of me mounting this next one. 
Okay, so this is the old dome camera removed. And as you can see, I already had to cut a chunk in the back of the uh, the soffits to clear that. But it did fit under that, that front lip. Uh, no problem, because it was a much smaller camera. But as you can see here, holding the base plate of the new camera up, it comes right to the very front. So obviously I'll have to cut that out as well. And you can see on the felt tip marks there, even the back, it's a larger diameter, so that back slot has got to be enlarged as well as cutting the, the front out. Like I say, it's right at the front of the, the front. Now, this is the tools I used. It's a, a Works Sonic Crafter, uh, otherwise known as a multi-tool or an oscillating multi-tool, and a small wood chisel. Now, if you haven't got a multi-tool, um, I would put it at the top of your tool list because they are a brilliant tool. Really, really handy. Come with curved blades, straight blades, and it's one of my most frequently used tools. But if you haven't got one of them, you could use a, a small drill and stitch drill around the, the line and, and chisel between them. But like I say, get yourself a, a multi-tool. Um, they're, they're really handy, particularly for putting mortise locks indoors and, and things like that. So this is it once I've chiselled out the front and the back. Uh, it's not the neatest job, particularly at the front, as you'll see. But uh, even with a, a multi-tool, it's quite hard to get a perfectly curved edge on something like that when you're working end-on. But uh, just about managed it. You can fill any, any gaps in with a bit of filler after. So I've also sprayed the wood there. It's a bit hard to see at the front. I don't like it sprayed, but I've just sprayed it with some white aerosol. On the end grain just just to uh, take the bare wood a bit from any moisture and that's the base plate in position as you can see i filled a little gap at the front with some exterior filler but you could use silicone or, or anything like that i've left the gap at the back it's not too important there i, I always tape round the network connection the network cable connection because if you're pulling it through if you ever need to take the camera off and you're pulling the cable out if it snags on something in the loft it can disconnect itself which means another trip into the loft to retrieve it if you tape it it stops doing that okay that one you can see the silica gel you get that with the cameras it's a bit of a bag of stuff that absorbs moisture you get it with all sorts of cameras and electronic equipment and that's where it goes, that's where it was in the box. And it helps absorb any moisture in the atmosphere or whatever before it gets to the camera. And then once it warms up in the sunny daylight, the moisture goes and it's ready to absorb some more. So don't forget to put that in before you uh, pop the camera into place. There it is in place and roughly lined up. Um, that screw you leave loose so you can move it around. You can see it's not fully tightened up yet and I put an extra bit of sellotape over that lens just to protect it because the tool the angled tool does come a bit near that when you're tightening it up so I don't want to scratch it and there it is all finally lined up and that screw tightened up with the the cover the bayonet fix cover over the the base plate and that's uh, that's it just about done and finally, that's the old infrared emitter I used. Like I mentioned before, the dome cams are extremely prone to internal reflections in the rain at night, making the view illegible due to splodges. So what I did was I turned off the internal infrared emitter and I used that one instead, which is more powerful and lit up a, a much bigger area. Uh, when they also did away with all the splodging problems. If you haven't seen that video, um, check it out in one of my other videos and it explains all that in, uh, in detail. But uh, that's it and uh, I'll be taking that off because I won't need it anymore with these new cameras. Okay, so that was the uh, installation of it. Um, pretty straightforward, but I uh, just thought I'd, I'd show you the few pictures. So what I'm going to show you now is the footage from the old cams and the new cams. Now, 
it, it does go on quite a bit but um i did it that way to, to show you the actual detail as far as i could so you can judge for yourself the difference between the cameras so we've got some a bit of daytime footage from them all uh, but mainly nighttime footage to show you the difference so there's the three megapixel dome camera first followed by the five megapixel turret camera and then finishing off with the new four megapixel color view cameras so while you're watching this just so, see how i look particularly on the night shots how do i blend into the background how do i stand out from the background what sort of ghosting is there on each camera could you tell what colors i was wearing at night is the face washed out stuff like that so have a look at these clips now and i'll let you be the judge so this is the the daytime view from the three megapixel dome camera you can see me over the road there just wander into the corner we'll be doing nighttime shots of this soon but see we're just wandering over the road to this corner in front of this vehicle and then we'll, we'll zoom in on this bit shortly so that's me just stood still there and that's a five times a 500 percent zoom on that uh, old dome camera you can still read the number plate but my facial features aren't, aren't that clear as you can see that's quite close up so that's back in the car out and i'm trying to position the number plate because we're going to zoom in on that soon and we'll see what that looks like still daylight and you can see that's quite legible that's a three times zoom with the uh, the old three megapixel dome camera now this next bit is at night now you can see me wander into that corner and i'm totally lost there totally lost in the shadows just like a ghost and that's zoomed in five times zoom as me stood on that street corner and um i'm not totally under the street lamp but you can just see it's, it's just a a blur there's hardly anything visible at all and again this is me stood in that same spot in front of that car you can't read the number plate or see what i'm wearing or see any of my facial features that's using the external infrared emitter which is better than the internal one that's the car again zoomed in again the number plate is illegible because it reflects the infrared light this is just showing me security lights coming on they are very bright security lights and uh, it fools the camera into thinking it's daylight and it actually turns color so it's handy when they come on but obviously only when people are very near so this is now the five megapixel camera facing west and you can see me wandering down there and that's that's frozen in there that's a three times zoom better you can see um but still not ideal can't really see facial features but i am stood quite a way off this is that same camera at night this is using its separate it's not a dome camera this it's a turret but over the street there you can see i'm almost blended into the privet edge you can't make anything out you'd be lucky to even spot there was a human being there because it's on the periphery of the uh, the infrared emitter and that's in a brighter spot the infrared is better there you can actually see the person but that t-shirt believe it or not is black it's the same t-shirt i wore during the daytime shots and it's a black t-shirt with a, like a brown logo you know it looks white now this is the new four megapixel color view cams um wandering over the road there and that's the same position i was before zoomed in five times you can actually see facial features this time even though it's uh, a megapixel less than the other one it's uh, than the five megapixel it's a great picture that's the car again obviously positioned the same and that's the three times zoom compared to the other one we're still in daylight at the moment but now we've turned to night time and i've put up there this is night because to my mind it's still unbelievable 
I haven't got any security lights on. All there is is the street lights. And you can see me stood there. Again, you can't make out facial features because I'm quite far away and it's a five times zoom. But you can see colours and you can see the t-shirt is black. And again there. And zoomed in. This time you can see facial features. Don't forget this is pitch black at night. There's only the, the poxy little LED street lamps. To the naked eye, this is a really dark street. So that's the car out there if i'd have froze it there and zoomed in you could have read the number plate but now with the headlights on you can see some vague but you might be able to make something out of a number plate there but obviously not ideal but that's a three times zoom at night between the headlights so you can make out detail and of course color so this is the uh, west facing camera in the day and again stood in the same spot as i did on the other camera Three times zoom, you can see better facial pictures features on that one than the other. Just about make out another plate at the back, but you couldn't read it. Now this is again at night, again pitch black at night. It is quarter past eleven at night, no supplemental lights whatsoever. And that's me stood against that same privet hedge where I disappeared into last time. And you can see, again, no facial features. It's a three times zoom quite far off. But you can see the colour of my T-shirt, the colour of the logo and blue jeans and blonde hair as well. And again, as I move to the, the area that was better lit from the infrared on the other one, stand in front of that white panel there and zoom in. Three times zoom, you can start to sort of make out facial features there. The look at the shadow that's invisible to the human eye you can't see that shadow so i've included this next shot it's the back of the house just to show you what it's like without any street lights at all uh, sorry about the mess it's accumulated over covid19 ready to go to the tip but look at the sky look how bright it looks and that is a black sky it's half past midnight this pitch black at that you can't see anything with the naked eye Okay, just before we go into a, a final summing up, I did say I'd let you hear the difference between the sound between the old cameras and the new cameras. Um, as I mentioned before, the new cameras have a built-in mic, which is good, you don't have to set up an external one, but the disadvantage of that is that it's not as sensitive as using an external mic, and there is no facility to put any fur around to act as a dead cat to eliminate wind noise like you can with the external mics so i'm just going to show you two clips first of all the old camera with the cheap ebay mic i showed you earlier on uh, only three or four quid wrapped with a bit of fur to eliminate wind noise and followed by the new color view camera and see what you uh, you think i've not touched the sound whatsoever it's exactly as it comes off uh, off the cameras uh, I've left the volumes are exactly the same so you judge for yourself what you think is the best sound out of these two one two three four testing sound test one two three four CCTV camera sound test one two three four one two one two three four so this is bang center of the two cameras testing sound one two three four CCT. 
TV camera sound test. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. So this is bang center of the two cameras testing sound. One, two, three, four. So, uh, as you just heard, the sound uh, is slightly better on the old cams. But that's just at a minor point. Um, it's far outweighed bad performance of the new cams. And I'm just blown away. I still can't get over how good they are, as you saw, at night. Uh, don't forget the night views. That's why I put this is night exclamation mark, just to show you it was night. And it was a really dark night as well. It was like... After 11 o'clock and the sky was black, I couldn't see my shadows. I physically couldn't see any shadows of me. Um, and you, you, you could on that footage. The street lights in my street are just the normal, pretty useless to the naked eye. LED ones are really dim. They're not as bright as the old uh, orange ones they took out. And it's just a typical suburban street um, with a few little... Uh, street lights so that's absolutely plenty of light to give you them color images i didn't use the built-in supplementary led lights i can only see them being useful if if you're in say, the middle of the country with not any light whatsoever in absolute pitch black yes you would need them them lights because there's no light for the cameras to amplify but i was thinking 90 percent of normal domestic um, situations the street lamps are easily enough and as I showed you on the backyard view there's no street lamps at the back of our house and uh, the, the images you saw was great and that was at night pitch black night as well now the one problem I did have was I was using this this was my old NVR it's an old E series Vision NVR that I'd had for the full five years and it's a, an older design than that as well. Now it's not capable of recording footage from the four megapixel cameras. It can do the three megapixel and the five megapixel but it uh, five is the max it can do and for some reason it doesn't do the four megapixel. When you set the correct le resolution for the four megapixel in, in the the settings of the MVR it just flips back to 1920 by 1080 um, 1080p so full HD so you're not getting the proper image um, so I had to get uh, this a new MVR it's the K series like I said the E series I had was really really old and it's the uh, it's the K series one which will do up to eight megapixel cameras and three, four, five, eight megapixel. And it's um, easier. The browser is a bit easier, particularly the playback. It doesn't freeze as much. It's, it seems a lot speedier. The processors inside must be faster uh, than the old one. The i series, which is the, the top of the range, is uh, the only sort of difference with them is they'll do up to 12 megapixels and they have um, things like a higher outgoing bandwidth but uh, like I say for domestic use like mine I think the, the the i series is probably a bit overkill the annoying thing is that the i series does have the latest version 4 firmware which is supposed to have an updated um, user interface and one good point is that on the version 4 I believe you can use Firefox and Google Chrome as your web browser whereas still on the cat now that firmware has been out for at least two years but on the K series um, even though they did release a version 4 firmware for it I've been told that it was withdrawn because it did have the odd problems and they haven't released an updated one so you're still stuck using Internet Explorer as a web browser uh, to view your footage. You can either use your TV connected to the uh, direct to the NVR, but if you want to use a web browser, you have got to still use Internet Explorer. 
which is it's it's crap really i mean hick vision make or hack vision make fantastic hardware as you've just seen the cameras are just stupendous that night time view for them color view cameras is fantastic i still can't get over how good it is uh, and the NVR, it's the reliable, they've never let me down, never broken down or anything. But their firmware and software is, you know, really clunky and bad. You go on the, the portal, the European portal, the Amsterdam portal, and it's got an old version of VS Player. You can find the later one further on. If you want to update firmware, it's not obvious which it is. You've got to go into the lab. Categories, back ends, front ends. What are back ends? What are front ends? The back end is the, the main firmware. But I'm just a normal domestic guy. I'm not a CCTV installer. And they've done half make it difficult. I know that they're mainly a based for a professional to, to fit. But still the customer needs to be able to control them. And they could make things a hell of a lot easier. So the, you know, the disc that you get with it, it's got outdated instructions on it. They also encode the footage. When you've downloaded it, you can't, it's an MP4, but you can't play it on most media players. You've got to use Hikevision's own VS player to play it. Now that has got a converter on it as well, but again, it's really sort of clunky to use. I tried using it on footage from these new cameras and I was getting all sorts of horrible artifacts, like a big bar along the bottom full of look like a barcode i went online looked at a few things i wasn't the only one a few were getting it some said reinstall vs player on your d drive not your c drive and various things to get up i tried all sorts re-downloading it reinstalling it trying different bit rates and i still got this terrible banding um so i used i found, uh, found a great bit of free software called handbrake and Handbrake converts Hike Vision files into normal MP4s that you can play on any MP4 player fantastically. It's got a really nice interface. You just drag it on, drag your file onto it, and it's just so much easier to understand than VS Player. So I'm going to make another video on the difference between VS Player and Handbrake. I believe you can convert as well through VLC Media Player. Um, I shall try that as well, but I'm going to use Handbrake because you can set all sorts of things. I'll, I'll go into it mainly in that video, but you can even set it to utilise your graphics card. And I've got quite a good uh, game playing PC with a an RTX 2060 NVIDIA graphics card, and you can utilise that, you can set settings up for that, and it, it transcodes double speed but i'll show you that in the other video so yeah hick vision message to hike vision keep making the great uh, hardware but please sort your software and your firmware out let's have an update for the k-series nvrs and let's have it a bit easy to understand your website and your updating Okay, so I think that's about it now. I've run through everything I can remember, the unboxing and the difference between the new colour view cameras and the older ones on the size and the installation of it and mainly the, the, the footage created by them. And again, I know I keep saying it, but I'm blown away by the nighttime footage from these new cameras. So would I recommend them? Yes, um, without any shadow of a doubt. Um, we just need Hick Vision to sort the software and firmware out and it would be uh, unbeatable. One final mention to these guys who have got it off and they got the NVR off them as well. Like I said, great service, proper uh, Lancashire service you get off these guys. They're based in Rochdale, CCTV empire great prices and uh, so far great service off them as well so like i say i'll try and get around to doing that video on the uh, handbrake and vs player the difference on transcoding hick vision video footage as soon as i can keep your eyes open for that but until then and the next review thanks for watching bye for now